Good morning, party people! It's the first time Nick's ever done that on camera. Impressive. Hey, welcome back to another video. Speaking of good morning, party people, new merch is available. If you want to spread those good vibes, support Milestone, link is down the bio below. Get involved, wear some shirts, spread good vibes. Hey, what are we doing today, Nick? Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a QA. and a uh, You guys ask the que questions. You ask the questions. He asked the questions, you asked the questions the other day on his Instagram, and I'm going to question answer the questions. So Nick doesn't normally get on camera with me, but so as this is, I think, probably the last YouTube video we're going to do together for a while, Nick is going to actually be on camera for this, and the light just changed dramatically. That's okay. fine. Um, yeah, so we thought today we'd do something fun, have Nick ask the questions, and we'll go from here. Let's get into it, hey? Yeah. Alright, we've got a question here from Daniel. Uh, what is the best motivational quote you can give someone? Attitude is everything. Hmm? This is actually like advice I got from my dad when I was a kid. And he's saying that the attitude you take towards everything is everything. If you have a bad day, but you go at it in a bad way, it's going to affect you negatively. Whereas if you have a bad experience and you go, you know what, I'm going to have a, I'm going to change this, I'm going to go at it, I'm going to fix this situation, it's going to improve things. So for me, I stay motivated by choosing my attitude. I choose to look in the positives and I feel like that's really something that everyone can take away from. Motivation should be intrinsic. It should be something that comes from within. Don't rely on other people to motivate you. If you're choosing to be happy and you're choosing to be motivated, you will be motivated. Yes. <laughs> yes. Agreed. I was just going to say, just be better. Yeah, well, that's yeah. always that. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah. 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 Next question. Yeah. All right, we've got a question here. Is getting ripped achievable naturally at 45? Yeah, absolutely. Losing weight and getting ripped is all about diet. So if you want to lose weight, you need to eat in a caloric deficit. It means you need to cut the calories. You can do it at any age. It is a little bit harder the older you get to build muscle, but in terms of losing fat, yeah, you can do it at any age. It's a lifestyle choice and you can absolutely do it. If you need help, Milestone can help you there, so check out the link below. Could you imagine like a 90 year old ripped as? There is a dude, I'm, it depends on how eager you are to find this. There's a, a guy that's like, he's 85 and just jacks. There's photos of him on the internet, I've seen him a bunch mm. of times. If you can maybe, find that photo, we'll put make him pop up. Uh, where is the party these party people are attending? Oh, life is a party. Life is a party! Good morning party people is because I just think, like people think of partying as going out like drinking and taking drugs. I don't do either of those things. But I love to party. I want to spread good vibes, and that's what the party is. The party is the good vibes that you guys are spreading. Mmm. Talking about <laughs> spreading good vibes. Mmm. <laughs> love it. What do you do to lift yourself up on a bad, on a bad day? Um, surround myself with positive people. I do life-affirming things. I get off my phone. I feel like people get really caught up in social media and the negatives of it. If you're in a bad mood, you're gonna look for the negative in things, which kind of ties back to my whole motivation thing before, look for the positives. But if you're in a bad mood and you're not feeling good and things are going against you, you're gonna focus on those negatives. Social media does have negatives. Comparing yourself to other people is not gonna help. Put the phone down, go for a walk, do something like life-affirming, go to the gym, do some exercise, watch a fun movie, whatever it is, and then get out of the slump. Talking about movies. Avengers? Avengers, but favourite series and favourite movie. Or, like, it can be, like, a favourite TV series or... Yeah, okay. So, I love Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. I love Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. uh, does Marvel count? Because it's just, like, it's not a series anymore. They're just, mm -hmm. like, its own thing. We were just discussing Endgame comes out today. While we're filming this, Endgame is out. Nick's going today. I'm going tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. So excited for it. But I'm not going to count that because like, I love all the Marvel movies. Harry Potter, I love the books, therefore I love the movies. Lord of the Rings, I love the books, therefore I love the movies. I'm not choosing. There's a few. Bit of both. both. Okay, talking about uh, Harry Potter and all those movie series, well, uh, which Hogwarts house are you in? Well, I've done the quiz for this one on, uh, is it Pottermore? Is it on the website? I think so. Yeah, there's like a quiz on there you can go through and figure out what house you're in. Uh, I'm in Gryffindor, which I, I'm not surprised about. I feel like I really relate to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a Gryffindor. What, do you know what you are? No. You'd be a Slytherin, I reckon. Yeah. Purely because you're like uh, tall and snake. slim and tattooed and dark. Mm. I feel like you're like a Severus. What do you ask for when you get a haircut? Hey Nick. 
Can you give me a haircut? Yes. We've got a video on this as well. Check it out up there. Um, this is pretty standard, but we are gradually growing the top of my hair out again. I'm going to wear it a little bit neater for a while. We're also about to uh, do a cutthroat shave on me tomorrow, so I'm going to have no facial hair tomorrow. Very exciting. Yeah, I'm actually excited about it. Your guilty pleasure? Ice cream. And I don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> it's just a pleasure. Ice cream is like my biggest vice. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't have any of that. But I have an absolute sweet tooth and ice cream is my biggest vice. How many calories are you eating in a day? Just up this. And if you watch my video last week where I've started, I actually talked about my new training routine. This is also part of my diet. For the next six weeks, I'm doing a mini bulk, which means I'm having a caloric surplus. I'm eating anywhere between 4,000 and 4,500 calories a day. It's a lot of food. It means I can have more ice cream than I normally do. I'm just giving my body a break from being so lean, to be honest. So currently at about, yeah, 4,000, 4,500. Standard is 3,000 to 3,500. Nice. Yeah, it's a lot of food. Are you pansexual? What is pansexual? Is that, should we Google it? I feel like pansexual is where you love a person for who they are rather than based on gender. Possibly. Pan's labyrinth. Pansexuality or homosexuality yeah. is a sexual romantic or emotional attachment to people regards their sexual gender. Um, in short, no. I, I don't, I am attracted to females. I don't find guys attractive uh, sexually. But I definitely believe you can love someone. Like, I love my friends, but in like a non-sexual way. So in terms of like, sexual, no. It's, uh, it's girls for me. How is Mexico? Oh, Mexico is beautiful. I have a lot of people who follow me from Mexico and I understand why you guys have been asking me to come there for so long. It was beautiful. I would definitely like to go back there. I feel like our trip was a little bit ill-planned in terms of we were just traveling consistently. I need like three days in each location. But the wedding I went to down near Puerto Escondido was incredible. Uh, Mexico City looked really nice and I really enjoyed Tulum. So I'll be back. Same. <laughs> you, you enjoyed oh, my trip? Yeah, it was excellent. It was great. <laughs> you enjoyed being uh, away from me. What size shoes do you wear? I wear a US 8. I prefer a US 8.5 because I've got wide feet and normally the half size is the width, but yeah, I can get away with a US 8. Do you prefer bodybuilding or calisthenics? I pref that's, a, that's a good question. I've never been asked that. I prefer bodybuilding, to be honest. I like calisthenics in terms of I've always enjoyed doing handstands and muscle ups and backflips and that sort of stuff but if I had to choose one that I did consistently it would be bodybuilding I think there is more variation in that than I Where do you get all your sweet Metallica shirts? My actual Metallica shirts are all vintage I thrift them from thrift stores um, and I also did a line for Milestone which is like inspired by my love of old school metal so we've got like a Metallica inspired, Slayer inspired and Iron Maiden inspired which you can all get at the link below. How do you move your breasts? Like this? Can you do it? You need to have uh, bigger pecs in order to move them. I do have a rather large chest, um, but I can't move them. Some people can like really individually move them. I'm not great at that. I actually don't have very good muscle. Um, you know, people can like flex certain things and like, I'm really not good at posing. Or flexing I don't do it very often so like I shot with the guys from Gymshark and they all know how what their angles are and how to make themselves look good I just kind of stand there and hope for the best have you ever experienced a haunting oh I did a job with Instagram last week where I actually went out to Cockatoo Island Sydney and we did a ghost tour and it was terrible it sucked I don't believe in ghosts just putting that out there and the guy was really trying to sell it he's like Watch the crystal move, I'm not doing it. And his hand was just doing this. It, yeah, it was It was not for me. So no, I've never had a haunting. Let's be friends? We are. Sweet. But that goes for you too. We're friends. If you watch my content, you know who I am as a person. I assume you're a nice person. We're friends. What do you want to, 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 I like that question. I recently listened to a podcast with my dear friend Steve Cook and 
it was with Sean Stafford on the Dad Bod cast, which you should check that out if you're interested. It's very interesting. And he was also asked the same question. What did he want his legacy to be? And I think that I want... I don't really focus on like what I want to be remembered for. I just want to help people. Mm. That's where, I've, like, over time with social media, I've been so blessed to have this platform and through Milestone, changing people's lives for the better. I want to help people not only, like, look good and feel good, but also just change their lives for the better. I want them to be positive people. I want to choose happiness. I want people to choose happiness. I want people to, like, go, yeah, I really enjoyed Nathan as a person. He, he inspired me to do more good things. If I can do that to a few people here and there, that's I feel like that's a really nice thing to leave behind. So nice. Okay, Court wants to know, have you put your clothes away yet? Yeah, how neat is my place right now? That's pretty neat. We did a big spring clean and I donated like four bags of stuff to charity. Um, so everything's like tidy and sorted, which is good. Huh. Who is your favourite lane and why is it me? <laughs> okay, I'm not even know. So Nick has just got these questions and I'm letting him pick what he wants to answer here. I'm guessing that one's from Lane. Yep. That's my business partner for Milestone. My favourite lane is Lane Beachley. Um, I really like... <laughs> How many hours do you train per day? This varies greatly depending on my schedule with Milestone and both my own training. Because when we shoot for Milestone, I'm always training in order to demonstrate the movements. My own training for me, I'd say maybe an hour and a half in most sessions. And normally I train once to twice, five to six days a week. At the moment it's a little bit less because I am focusing on growing. So I'm actually doing about one big session a day. And that is an hour and a half each day. Uh, do you shave or trim your armpit hair? I do not. Is that simple? <laughs> nope. How do you get paid off social media? That's a good question. Um, through social media alone, you'll see when I do like sponsored work with brands, because above the photo it'll say like, I think sponsored work mm. or paid post by. Um, I always try and be very clear with this because I don't want people to feel like I'm just like tricking them into buying a product. Anyone I work with, I work with because I genuinely use the product or I believe in. So yeah, I'll always say if I'm getting paid for it. Brands will pay me to advertise. I've got a big channel um, and hopefully you guys that do follow me trust in what I'm saying. I'm, I'm recommending things that I actually like and believe in. So if I'm saying to buy it, it's because I genuinely believe in it. Um, so if it's a product I don't know, I'll always test it out before I do it. But yeah, like I work with the same brands pretty consistently. I work with Uniqlo on a kind of month-to-month -month basis. I just finished a job with Rexona, which is like a deodorant I've been using for years. So that was like, it was real. I wanted, I still recommend that product. I'm not getting paid right now. Definitely use Rexona Clinical. It's amazing. It's a game changer. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, I got Nick onto it. Um, but yeah, normally it's like I get paid to post and advertise through my channels. I have ongoing partnerships like Gymshark, which I'm very clear about. I've worked with them all the time. I wear them consistently. I'm wearing their socks right now. Um, but yeah, you'll see that. And then through Milestone, our programs, obviously I make money off that. So teaching people how to be in the best shape of their lives, we pay for, like people pay us for that. So that is um, the majority of my income right there through training. All right. Favorite place in Australia? Uh, that's a really good question. I have a lot, I like national parks. Most of the national parks are so beautiful. I also love where we live. Mm. I live on the central coast of New South Wales. It is beautiful. The beaches are nice. The weather is pretty consistently good. We're close to Sydney, but it's also a bit of an escape. Um, home is where the heart is. Mm. What is your take on wearing compression pants in the gym without shorts over them? I do it all the time on leg day. The whole idea for me with compression pants is wearing something that's tight and fitting and it's gonna help with uh, the muscle structure and keeping everything nice and tight. It's also a bit of warmth. The shorts thing, I guess, is a modesty thing. I'm fine with it. It's whatever, it's the human body. It's not as though I'm wearing Speedos or a thong. So mm. I'm fine with wearing tights in the gym. That'd be pretty funny shorts. though, squatting in the thong. Definitely not gonna do that. What is your favorite Gymshark product? Oh, really good question. Um, the tanks. Their tanks are my favorite in terms of good fit. They're not too layery. There's not too much stuff going all, all over them. Um, and they consistently bring out just like good quality product. They're good at training. They're a great fit. I like them the most. Nice, nice, nice. These shorts are my favorite. Oh the yeah. Shorts. Yeah, they are great. Fantastic. I'll be wearing them every single day of my life. Gymshark's doing a really good job of evolving beyond just being a gym brand in terms of like a lifestyle brand. So the stuff they're bringing out there 
like their track pants and their hoods and jackets and like rain wear. I just wore one of their like spray jackets right through the states. It was raining and it was fantastic. It's a little bit longer, waterproof, top notch. So Gymshark, keep up the good work. By your experiences, is it true that it's bad to work out too late at night? No, no. Most people, unless you're at the absolute pinnacle elite level of fitness, timing isn't all that important. Um, work out when you're most motivated and you can get the best workout done. If you're a late night person, go in the gym late at night, that might work for you. For me, I need to sleep at night. So I work best early mornings or early afternoons. Late at night, I'm too tired to train properly. But hey, you do you. Is it important to take breaks from supplements? That's a really good question. Some supplements, no. I think pre-workout, like anything caffeine related, it's good to have a break from. Your body can uh, build up a tolerance to it, so you stop getting the effects. That's why I see like guys that have been bodybuilding wear for a long time, they you know, like three scoops of pre-workout to get the same effects. I have like half a scoop of pre-workout, I'm buzzed, because I don't take it all that often. So I think anything caffeine or stimulant related, definitely take a break. In terms of like whey protein and stuff like that, no, it's fine. It's Top three restrictive foods for you. My diet when I'm being really strict is so boring. Chicken, rice and veg. It's good carbs, good protein, good fibers and the greens. That's it. It's super simple. Eating clean is not hard. It's boring, but it's not hard to do. When tucking your shirt, does the shirt go into the undies or just the shorts? <laughs> like Captain Underpants style. <laughs> Superman! Uh, you just need the shorts. The tuck is all about it started for me because like I'm only 5'9", I'm not the tallest dude in the world, and some singlets were quite long. I started tucking because everything was just hanging down too long. And then I just decided I really liked the way it looked, so I kept doing it. But um, yeah, the tuck's just like an aesthetic thing. Why don't you own your own TV show? Why don't I own my own TV show? Why aren't I on a TV show? Oh, why don't you own my <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that much money. Just, I'm not a producer. Hey, why don't you have your own TV show? This is something I've actually been getting more and more lately. People being like, you should be on TV, you should have done that. I have done little bits of TV. I've done some stuff for MTV. I did Ninja Warrior, which is just like me competing on something. I'm definitely open to doing TV. It just be finding the right format that was like, not just doing it for the sake of doing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that could be a fun thing to do. It's not a question, but you're amazing and I love your job. Oh, thanks, Nick. That one's from Eric, not me. Thanks, Nick. All right, so how many pairs of sneakers do you have? Uh, I've actually never counted. I would say 50, maybe 50 is a bit more. There's like eight rows, four. 45 to 50 pairs, I would say. Too many? I don't know. What's next? All right. What is your proudest accomplishment so far? In terms of like a physical thing, I'd say Ninja Warrior. I was really like, proud that I did better on that than I expected. I'm not built for that type of thing. In terms of life, I would say the fact that I've been able to spread joy and positivity and good vibes consistently is what I'm most proud of. I get a lot of people like, it's so hard being in the space, being in the, like, the public space, you get a lot of negativity from people that whether they're having a bad day or they're just like trolls, whatever it is, to not let that get the better of me and keep doing me like when people are like, you're on steroids, you can't do that naturally. And knowing my own self-worth, I think that's what I'm most proud of. Mm. Um, yeah. Nice. I have a question for you. Here we go. All right, question away then. What's been your favorite experience over the past year? What's, a, what's a, are you like most proud of? What are you, like if you had the most fun doing, what are you like working together? Well, working together or yeah, just you're like you're you're having a baby I'm not yeah because I was very, just about to say that's you've like been married, you're having a baby ever. forget your wife <laughs> and your future child um probably the best experience that I have had is uh Gymshark Week that was such an eye opening time to be able to have that opportunity to be able to hang out with such talented athletes and creatives and stuff like that and course you know I wouldn't have been able to do it without with Nathan here um, and that just gave me the opportunity to be able to see life in a different way of like you know how we creating with such like-minded people and being around such motivating people like Nathan um, and just maximizing that by 10 it just kind of like inspired me and put a little fire in my belly to 
keep going forward even more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nick has crushed it. So we were talking this before, but a year ago, Nick wasn't a videographer. He was my barber, just like working full time at a barber shop. So the past like six, eight months, he's become a very talented content creator and videographer and photographer. And I'm really proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey guys, that's going to do. We're going to leave on a mushy note. Um, if you've got more questions, maybe I'll do another Q&A soon. Until then, make sure you subscribe, give the video a like. Namaste. Namaste right here. We'll see you soon.